Gianna and Vanita here, and we're doing a discrepant event called Soda, Sink, or Float. Okay, so before you get started, it's good to ask questions. The first question is, are there any differences between diet soda and regular soda besides its taste and amount of calories? The second question is, have you ever wondered if diet soda weighs less than regular soda? This activity will help us understand the relationship between gravity and density. And this is a fourth grade standard that we're addressing. It's a physical standard, S4P3. Students will demonstrate the relationship between the application of a force and the resulting change in position and motion of an object. So the materials are one can of diet soda, which is about one dollar, and also one can of regular soda, which is also one dollar. You would also need a container and fill it with water. The setup is really simple and this works best as a teacher demonstration. So all you need to do is have your water ready to go and your two cans of soda um, ready to go. So the first step is you fill the tub or bucket with enough water to cover the cans. At this point you would ask your students before you place it in the water to make predictions. They see that both cans are the same size. They're actually both labeled as 16 fluid ounces. So students would assume that either both cans sink or both cans float. But this is where the discrepant event occurs. So you place both of the cans in the water and then observe the results. So students would see that the regular soda actually did not float, it sunk, and the diet soda actually floated. So this is when they would answer a questions on an activity sheet. The first question was, the can of regular soda pop sinks in water. What does this observation tell you about the density of the can of soda compared to the density of water? So the relevant science behind density is students would need to understand that this is made of real sugar, so that is why it's heavier and denser, and that's why it sinks. And the aspartame is actually lighter, and that's why it floats. So that would help them once they understand the relative science behind the first question. The second question is, the can of diet soda floats in water. What does this observation tell you about the density of the can of diet soda compared to the density of the water? The third question is, um, you would use the term weight, volume, and density to explain why adding bubble wrap makes a can of regular soda pop float in water. So that can be an extension to have bubble wrap so they can actually see if it's going to float still. And the fourth question, which is the last one, is explain why life jackets are made of lightweight material and um, are large as well. So that's kind of a real world application that will help with the science that we're discussing with density. Another relevant science thing to remember is that if the soda's density is less than the density of water in the container, then the can will float, and so they learn that. They can actually see the real uh, amounts of sugar versus aspartame, so it's 188 milligrams of aspartame in the diet soda compared to 40 and a half grams of sugar in the regular soda, which is resulting in a heavier, denser object. Mm -hmm. And also, um, it was, you should also explain what density and mass is as well. Um, mass is the amount of matter in an object and it remains constant while weight may vary. And then also density is a degree of compactness, which is also mass over volume. And water's density is one gram in centimeters. Students can recreate this experiment using different types of soda and see if it's similar. They can also try and see if they can um, use the bubble wrap with the new types of soda and see if it can be replicated. And then a really quick safety tip to remember is that students shouldn't open the soda right after because it has been in this water and could be upside down. So quick safety tip. Hope you're able to use this in your classroom. Thank you.